you're going to be in this business anytime, you got to know how to play the game. But you also have to know how to play the right game. I got thinking about this the other day when uh and after I did the other video and about cons and scams and all that and I got thinking about you know everybody plays a game guys that say they aren't playing a game are full of crap because they're just not playing your game or you're not playing their game do you think this is a game yeah I know it is and I got really thinking about that the other day because, well, I've had people playing some games on me lately. And uh, it's not whether you choose to play the game, it's how you play the game that's important. Because sometimes if you play the game by their rules and a very strict definition of what they want, um, you can get this crap to stop. And sometimes... It's not a bad thing. So, I'll give you some examples and uh, things that I've learned and hope, hopefully this helps because, well, the game is real and everybody's playing. And uh, it's how you play or how you choose to play which makes all the difference in the world because uh, a lot of times you can get what you want and a lot of times you... Uh, don't make a lot of people mad because sometimes if you meet them at their level you can get what you want before they even realize they got got so let's get started part of what got me thinking about this was a camera system as you see right there I had a camera installed on this side and one right here they work with the company smart drive and truthfully I like things that are integrated I would like to put my own in the truck, but you know, I actually asked for this because a lot of the things that have been going on have been happening to the sides of the truck. So I said, hey, I will work with you guys. I said, I know no company driver really wants this. I said, but with what's going on out here, I need to protect myself. Can we do this? So remarkably, we had another owner operator. He was interested in doing this too. So they bought two sets of cameras. I said, well, put them on. All right. So it took a while and we couldn't get all the pieces and things. And then once we got all the cameras, that's when the game started. Now, before we get started, I'll be straight up. There's been no games with the company. The company's been wonderful. Um, the boss, everybody, they were on board from this. They liked the idea of it because the owner of the company really has been curious about how these cameras work and he wants to try them out but at the same time he wants to keep employees and he knows that truck drivers are fickle even with trucks that aren't theirs and since this isn't something mandatory he was like you know what i'm really curious i want to see how these work integrate it with the truck and all that we got two guys that are volunteering to do it let's go ahead and do it so we finally get the cameras now get them hooked in do the whole screenshot get them in the shop kind of get him going but I got a load it's getting late I gotta go you know truthfully uh, we had some tires that needed to be fixed I got all my maintenance stuff done and I was like if it's in the truck but we can't get it to go I said we got we got just a few minutes because I've got to go get this load and I've really got to run I mean I, as I said I hate to do it this way but it, it is what it is uh, I got a long ways to go so you know I had to run 70 miles north to get my load then run all the way back down to where did I go with that oh back to Mississippi which consequently I ran back up and now I'm back in Mississippi again so we get the cameras in and uh, I don't know if they're working or not or all that this truck the smart drives haven't been real Peterbilt friendly but um, so I tried to get with the one of the people that I have to deal with and I got crickets so you know I don't know what's going on so I sent him a call I sent him an email I you know 
um, send him, you know, nothing. Now, what happened next kind of pissed me off because I know when I'm being played. Now, I've been at this game a long time, and I know when I'm being blown off. Now, there's two types of getting blown off. Well, three if you're a pervert. But the two types is without malice, or the other types is if you're like, screw this guy. And I really don't have a problem with the first and third. Um, but the second one is the one I have the most problem with. If you say, screw this guy, you know, all the signs are there. And when you start, you know, getting hung up on or automatically, and, you know, I've played this game long enough, I know all the signs and symptoms. I know what we're dealing with. So I usually try to, to give a little test. I'll go through an intermediary and then have them call him and instantly always picks up. Well, now he's not picking up. I managed to call him once in one week, got absolutely nothing from him, and I said, dude, you want these cameras to work? I said, I need to know if they're aligned, if they're on, if all of this stuff, I said, because I need to make sure everything is good before we get too far into this. Well, I got nothing. He's blown me off for an entire week. Well, the other day, I realized that he's playing a game. Whether he realizes it or not, he's playing a game. So I said, you know, I have to make a stand. I realized this is my truck. The name's on the title. Now, mind you, I work for people. I have the truck leased on. I have one customer, and they're the one I've leased on to. So I do have to respect their wishes. But this whole thing was completely voluntary. So I had to make a stand. Now, you don't need to die on every hill you climb. But here's what I told them. Now, while I may admit I may have gotten a little hot under the collar, a little hasty, that's a very dangerous thing to get when you're playing a game. Never get angry. Never get personal. Save that for the amateurs. You're out to do business. You're out to make money. But I told these guys, I said, look, you know, basically, this is a voluntary thing. I don't care what his schedule looks like. If he doesn't have five minutes... You know, within a week, I've been trying to get a hold of him. If he doesn't have five minutes to spare and he's going to play this play this game with me, I said, I'll take the cameras off and I'll send them back because they're doing me no good if I don't know they work or if I don't know they're aligned. You know, and if they're not working or they're not aligned, they're not doing anybody any good. That's, that's the point. So I made my stand and I said, this is, uh, this is the limit. But then, you know, this morning I was thinking, I was like, you know what? I do have an alternative. I can go around him. I can go over his head. But going over people's heads will have a tendency to be frowned upon at times because sometimes you've got to, you have to be at their level because if you keep pushing, eventually you'll be above their level. And that's kind of what I got to thinking. I was like, wait a minute. I have an alternative. There's another guy there I can talk to. We have an IT guy. And he's a pretty decent guy. And, you know, he's very busy. But uh, I'm sure that I can get to him and he will help me with my problem. So I'm going to try that first. And if I can't get any I can't get any love with him, well, then, you know, I'm going to have a talk with somebody else. And then we're going to find a solution where they come off. You have to know how to play the game. But you also have to know when to cash out. But at the same time, your decision to cash out cannot be based on anything emotion. Is this profitable? Yes or no. Is this affecting my bottom line? Yes or no. Is this stressing me out? Yes or no. You need to ask yourself a bunch of these questions before you just go ham, get all emotional, and throw a fit, and start lighting fire to, to things that don't need to be lit fire to. Playing the game. That's important. So, let's go on to the next thing. So, what is the game? Well, the game is a little different for everybody. You know, you're all going to play it a little different according to your circumstances. But the fundamentals always remain the same. The game, is it's important that you learn how to play. Now, when people tell you, I ain't playing games, no, what that means is you're not playing their game. They're playing their, their version of the game but you're not playing theirs. They want you to comply. You know, it's a, 
So that's that's what they mean by that. So by not playing the game or not playing their game, you know, you kind of end up playing your own. Now, let me premise this by saying this is nothing selfish. This is nothing bad. This is nothing. This is business and this is, is life. If, as an owner-operator, I have to look at several things. And I cannot let a lot of these trivial things affect how I do my job and how I run my business. Even as a company driver, you have to play the game to a point. Yes, you have rules and lines, and you signed up for all these things. I signed up for a lot of things by leasing my truck onto these people. I willingly admit that. And as a company driver, you do too. So how do you maximize your game playing potential? And how do you maximize your bottom line? Because truthfully, I'm not going to lie. And for anybody who says differently, I don't believe them. We're out here to make money. We're out here for our bottom line. We're out here for our pleasure. We're out here to work and afford to be able to do the things that we want to do. I, you know, this isn't a competition. This isn't anything other than us out hustling to make, you know, basically, like I said, we're hustling to make our scratch. This is, this is it. You're out here to make money. So the rules are very important because if you violate the rules that are laid out, you know, you can get in a lot of trouble. But what about the rules that aren't laid out? I got thinking about this today too. Back when I was training, I uh, um, we had a lot of rules that were unwritten. I don't like unwritten rules because they leave too much to be interpreted. Now, I know why they did it. They did it so they'd always have an out. Um, and trust me, when I challenged a lot of those rules or I challenged a lot of the preconceived notions and basically set up my own line saying, this is the bar, uh, those rules were challenged. And I'm not going to lie, there was a lot of policy change after I left. When the rules aren't challenged, you or the rules aren't written, you really need to sit down and ask yourself, what are the implications and what are they trying to convey? Because there's a lot of latitude, but there's also the fact that you're dealing with a lot of people. When you start ruffling feathers, um, you start creating a name for yourself. Basically, if you're gonna make money in this business, you have to have a good name, but you also have to have people who, uh, there, there's a lot of people that you don't want them to know who you are. And if they do know who you are, they have one notion of you as someone who just does their job and they never hear about. You're just a name on a sheet to them. A lot of times that's not a bad place to be. So how do you do that? Well, you have an understanding. And you also need to realize that this, this out here, dealing with these people and playing the game, this is strictly business. Don't ever make this personal. You make this personal, you're going to start going down a long rabbit hole that uh, you don't need to go down. This is business. Now, I'm not saying you have to crush your competition or screw other drivers over or people. No. If they're, uh, if they're not playing by the rules and they're doing their own thing and they're screwing up, trust me, they wash out long before you can do anything to them nor should you try. They're either going to figure it out or they're not. That's not your concern. You're in this business to make money. Making money is not a bad thing. That's why we're out here. We're not out here for funsies and we're not out here, you know, because for, uh, <laughs> we're not out here for free. We're out here to hustle and make money. And, uh, that's, that's part of the game. Now here's the one thing that a lot of people seem to forget. Even though you're playing your game, you're playing the game, you're hustling, you're going to need people. You're going to need people in your corner. You're going to need people to do certain things. You're going to have a business arrangement with a lot of people. It is not selfish or uh, anything bad to need people, to use people. If you're in their business. now. This is not like a boyfriend uses a chick she met at a bar, he met at a bar or something like that. You know, you're going to use people for your loads. You're going to use people for 
services that you can't do yourself. You need these people, you need these contacts, you need these things. And there's nothing selfish about that. It's all part of doing business. It's all part of playing the game. You just, you need these people. But not only that, do these people need you? Chances are no. But, you know, as an owner operator, I willingly lease my truck on here. And I also willingly, uh, I, I can leave anytime I want. I can take as much vacation time, I can quit. But that's the that's part of the deal is that if I leave here permanently It's not going to affect them at all. It's going to affect me greatly, but I willingly, you know left So this is something that you have to keep in mind. You need these people You know and you need the things that they can provide um, They provide me with a lot of things and a lot of the tools to make money and save money now could I do this without them? Probably so, but it, I wouldn't save as much and I wouldn't have as good of rates on fuel and insurance and things of that nature. And it would be a lot harder. Yes, I can do it, we all can do it. But you have to figure out how far you're willing to go in this game. Have you hit the ceiling? Are you comfortable where you're at? It's all part of playing the game. But like I said, you have to deal with people and how you deal with them is very important. Now, as someone who's been in a lot of trouble for not dealing with people properly, I can uh, most assuredly tell you that the worst thing you can ever do is raise your voice to somebody and the worst thing you can do is curse. Now, every now and then I slip and I do have called people out on their crap. But truthfully, sometimes you have to be a little bit of a Karen. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. If you have the boss's ear, or you have somebody high up, always be the last one to speak, always be the last one to criticize, and don't ever use those favors or your connections until you absolutely have to. If you're one of those people that tries to circumvent the game and get what you want by manipulating somebody else into giving you what you want, despite the fact these people over here are just trying to do their job, you will not be liked. You will not be favored, and eventually they will find a way to run you out. Um, and there are many, many different ways you can do that. You have to play the game. And sometimes playing the game means you have to deal with people you don't like. I deal with people I don't like all the time. We have one, uh, a couple dispatchers here. I am cordial with them. I'm very professional with them. Do I like them? One guy I'm kind of starting to like. The other guy I want to kick in the shin. Well, not the shin higher up because every time I deal with him, I feel dumber for having had to use the phone. Um, it just, but that's what you take. I mean, it's just, it's business. You don't, sometimes you don't get to pick and choose who you deal with. Sometimes part of playing the game is realizing that this person will give you what you want, but you have to deal with them. And uh, I don't, I don't like that, but it is what it is. Is the guy going to get you what you want? Absolutely. Do you have to deal with him? Absolutely. Do you have to like him? No. Are you going to go to his house on Christmas? Absolutely not. Uh, I, ugh, no. It's just, it is what it is. So, that's part of playing the game. You have to deal with these people. So, at the end of the day, what are you stuck with? Well, it's all up to you. At the end of the day, if you're going to deal with these people, you have to be straight up with them. Don't try to BS them. Don't try to slick them. At all. Because they, if you try to screw somebody over, you try to slick them, they remember that. But if you do your job and you do it well, you get the work. So, it's just, you have to deal with people you don't like. Your job, this is what you do for a living. Your job is to make money. How are you going to maximize your hours, your runs, your money, your uh, truck, your maintenance, everything you need to do? How are you going to get the best deals? How are you going to, you know, do all of this stuff? You have to play the game. You have to know things. Part of, you know playing the game out here and you wouldn't think this is a game but part of playing the game is 
time management, knowing where you're going. Um, Google Earth is fantastic, uh, but also reading a map. If you've been to these customers, you know what they expect of you, and you know how early you can come in. You know how to set up your clock. Um, I got a little extra time on this load, so I'm actually going to do a restart. Do I like sitting around? No, I don't. If I didn't have to, I wouldn't. But um, I realized I could bust down here. I'm 20 miles away, and I don't deliver till the day after tomorrow. So you know what? I'm in a good spot. Uh, I can get a shower, I can eat, I can have a nice day tomorrow to myself to sleep and recoup, and then kick it all off real early the day after tomorrow. And that right there, I got a restart. I maximized my time because I did get a restart. I understand where I'm going, I understand the customer, I understand everything that I need to understand for this game. Every load is different. and. Your job is to maximize. Now, as an owner-operator here, you know, I sit there and, uh, you know, I get the loads. I can pick and choose what I want from time to time. It's not forced dispatch at all. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow that. Um, but a lot of times they know exactly what I want. They just get, say, I got a load for you. Here it is. I'm like, yeah, I like that. But if I don't like it, I can say, is that all you got? And sometimes they'll kick something else out. But, you know, that being what it is, um, you sat there, you worked, you were nice to him, you asked questions. So, you just have to learn how to deal with people with diplomacy. And sometimes you have to play their game. Sometimes you can get them to play your game without, you even, without them even knowing that you're playing. You know, I'm not saying you have to slick somebody or manipulate them. But a lot of times, if you can get somebody into your corner, you can get what you want. And you can make some good money. Up years and down years, I make good money. I took 90 days off last year and still made really good money. Of course, last year was an exceptional year. But I did the same thing the year before. And the year before. I've worked myself into a position to where uh, I can keep my game tight. I can make my money, but I can still have my time off. Now, don't get me wrong. It took me 20 years to figure this out. But, uh, you know, you have to learn how to play it from your angle. And that's one more thing before we're done here, is we're going to talk about angling. Now, last thing before I'm done here is angles. If you approach these guys with an angle and try to slick them and outmaneuver them, I need to let you guys know, this company I'm with has been in business 100 years. They weren't in business 100 years because they were stupid. They have been in business a hundred years because they made right moves, they knew what they were doing, and they knew how to deal with drivers. Don't think you're going to come in and slick somebody, or you're going to get an angle. A lot of times they will give you exactly what you want, but if you would have just done what they wanted you to do, you would have got that and more. These are things you need to consider. You know, is this something that you want? You know, sometimes getting what you want can happen but you have to be a little patient you might not get it today but you'll get it tomorrow um sometimes they want to take you a little bit of roundabout but the load they have to get you there rather than just straight there it's going to net you an extra grand or two you know making a grant an extra grand for a day's worth of work isn't a bad deal you know so if you try to outfox them and out slick them and try to work on your cunning and all that you're not going to get anywhere. Eventually, you're going to get unemployed because people are going to be tired of dealing with you. You know, you play the game, but you don't try to be the game. You don't game them. You have to play within the rules, whether they're written or whether they're unwritten. You have to understand who you're dealing with. And when you're dealing with people, you're dealing with some, everybody's different. I have to deal with every dispatcher differently. You know, that's, but I don't yell at them, I don't curse at them, and I don't threaten them at all. I joke with them. I try to get on their side. I try to be hospitable. Uh, there's been a couple times I've gotten hot under the collar and I've called them out on a couple things. You know, sometimes you got to to keep them honest. Sometimes you do it like I did the last time. I was very upset, but I tried to, I wrote a very diplomatic, uh, angry letter and uh, I got a very heated phone call, but we worked it out and I explained my position. 
sometimes that's what it takes. Sometimes you have to sit down and explain to somebody, and if they're not willing to listen, I don't know what to tell you. Never, never quit your job over one person unless that one person controls the entire company and there's no other recourse. Like with my cameras, I have another recourse. And I'm going to go there. And if that doesn't work, then they come off the truck. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit here and can a whole experiment that I volunteered for over one guy. You have to think about it logically, diplomatically, and learn how to work through the system properly and play within the rules of the game to get what you want. Guys, I'm getting what I want right now. And... I'm doing it honestly. And these people are giving me what I want because I'm doing what they want. There's a mutual understanding here. It's tit for tat. They get, you know, they hired me, I do this, I get that. You know, there's not any favors happening here. I don't like the word favor because favors rarely mean I'm getting something out of it. That means I'm doing something for them and uh yeah, somebody's always on the losing end of this. So just, if you're going to work on your game, guys, keep it tight, keep it honest, and, you know, do your best. Because if you try to slick these guys, like I said, this company's been in business 100 years. They haven't been in business 100 years because they were stupid. And it's like that with all these guys. So be straight up, be honest, and do your best. And I'm sure that if you learn the rules and you learn the system and you learn how to work within the parameters that are provided... Your game's going to be tight, and you're going to make it out here, and you're going to make money. So I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. You guys be clean, be straight, be safe, man. Make some money, do well. I'll see you next video.